thanks. Um, and it's so weird uh, looking at a screen of just myself, right, and not being able to see any of the individuals that are that are out there. But we'll 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 make it do what what it do because I don't I don't know a way around that. But uh, thank thanks for everybody who's who's out there watching right now. Um, I would love to uh, have as as much of an interactive conversation around this as uh, as we possibly can, especially since we're talking about building a community, right? So you guys, um, if you can't voice those questions, it, it sounds like you can use the the chat for that. So um, you know, we'll we'll try to make this as as fun and as interactive as we possibly can. Uh, I'm I'm not that great at giving quote unquote speeches, um, but I can talk about my experiences and um, I'm, I'm fairly good at, at answering questions of uh, that are based on my past experiences uh, and or pointing people in the right direction uh, for them to be able to get assistance with whatever their endeavor, um, with whatever their endeavor is. So um, I'm James Chapman, I'm the founder and CEO of Plain Sight. Uh, Plain Sight is a mobile app that allows you to get familiar with the people and places in your local business community. Um, and we started this because every day, even when you're in the same city or you're in the same space as someone, millions of people all over the world were missing out on the opportunity uh, to connect with a potential customer, um, mentor, business partner, et cetera. And so building a stronger presence within your local business community can be hard. And with Plain Sight, we try to make that easy. And so, you know, times have definitely been challenging for us like they have been for, for everyone. Um, you know, we launched this platform in October and when we launched our strongest vertical was networking events actually. And so what would happen is that people would check in at these networking events and they would be able to see who else is in the room with them based on the profiles that other people, other users have created. Uh, and then they can make connections through the app from there, right? And uh, the second strongest vertical for us was actually travel. So uh, we developed a partnership with Delta for their Sky Miles lounges. So every Delta Sky Lounge in the country is actually listed on on plain sight and so now when you're going in the lounge and you're sitting very likely among a, a number of other influential people that that are traveling at the same time as you you can make those connections during your downtime and you know we we're really excited about both of those verticals and then COVID hit right and the uh, the two verticals that have been our strongest are completely wiped right away. Nobody's nobody's traveling on on airplanes as much in, uh, these days in, anymore, at least for a while. And so, uh, you know, people connecting in the Sky Miles Lounge isn't really a thing. You know, they're, they're hardly even wanting to get on a plane. Um, and then networking events, right, are, are completely gone away, which is the reason why we're doing Detroit Startup Week this year virtually. So, um, Plain Sight has had to make a number of, of adjustments and. Um, the very interesting piece about this journey that we that we've been on is that we were going to roll out our um, our community sharing um, feature, which we call Threads, where people can post about um, things that are inspirational, news that they need help with something, offer help to other people, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we were going to drop that feature at South by Southwest. We we're going to announce and release that feature at, at South by Southwest um, that, because that's like the perfect setting, right? You got this, this proximity based tool that allows you to connect with uh, like minded people that are in your same area, right? What, what better place to do that than, than South by Southwest? And then, of course, we always still have the, the spaces component for people to be able to check in. And, uh, you know, when, when, when COVID hit, that feature actually uh, has been our saving grace, right? And so now, um, you know, for, for, for the past few months, however, you've had people sitting inside their homes and we can't go out and we can't engage and, and make new meaningful connections the way that we have been able to in the past. And so we've almost been forced to lean on technology, right? We've been forced to get on Twitter more and Instagram more and Facebook more and plain sight to be able to, to help with bridging those, those connections and, and seeing what webinars are going on out there and what, what things can I join in on and what, what um, 
you know, what groups can I join in on, what virtual groups can I join in on to continue to sharpen my sword, right? Because it's one thing to say, we've got to sit in the house because of COVID, but it's another thing to say, man, we can't even grow professionally, right? Where, where does prove- professional development come in? Where am I going to continue to be able to add to my tool belt since I can't leave the house? Um, LinkedIn is another great platform that, that's been good that's been good for that. And so we've been really fortunate at, at Plain Sight because we've actually seen our highest daily active usage during this time of, of, of us being uh, isolated in our homes, right? And so one of the things that really helped with that is partnerships. So we've been doing a series called Ask Me Anything on Plain Sight, where we will find influential people who we have relationships with or, or, or that are one or two steps removed from, from our relationship circles. And we'll ask them to join our platform and just get on and post about themselves and then tell the community, ask me anything. And people will get on and they'll ask questions about um, different things that they feel like that subject matter expert, so to speak, can, can help them with. So. So far, we've had Jason White, who's the former CMO of Beats by Dre. He's now with one of the largest cannabis companies in the world. Um, we've had um, the, the CEO of Shinola who joined. Um, she did a really great job and actually gave away a Shinola watch to the person who asked the best question. Uh, and we've had Anson Powski Ward from Curio Brands, who's also an investor in plain sight and, and a native Detroiter. Um, and she's got one of the largest candle companies in the world. And, and all of these people have been just giving um, great insight on, on what it means to be able uh, to get to where they have gotten in their positions, right? Um, and being able to connect with each other um, to be able to sharpen each other's swords, so to speak. And one thing that's really cool about Plain Sight, uh, in my humble opinion, is that we have no names and no profile pictures to combat implicit bias. Um, because there, in my in my experience as just a Black male in America with a beard and tattoos and I'm from the South. So I got like this Southern drawl and accent at times, right? Um, Oftentimes it's hard to make connections with people, especially people who um, are gatekeepers or or people that have access to certain rooms that um, I, I just haven't been able to get access to in the past. And so, you know, I think that my experiences with that have, have kind of shown themselves in plain sight. Um, and my team believes in that mission of no names, no profile pictures, so that people can make that initial connection of saying, hey, I want to be able to collaborate with you. And it doesn't matter what you look like. Now, obviously, because of the things that you can put in your profile, you can take you know um, a, a deeper dive and be able to figure out what somebody looks like and what their name is, and that's fine because you can insert your Instagram, your Twitter, your, your LinkedIn accounts. Um, but, but our goal is to say, don't let that be the first thing um, that prevents you from making a good connection with someone, right? Um, and I, I think that that's something that we're always gonna live by because we wanna make sure that as much as we possibly can, everybody can have a seat at the table and everybody can have, can have equal access to human capital, right? Which will, which will hopefully take things to another level. And so, um, you know, trying to be social from a social distance um, has been very challenging Um, outside of, you know, obviously plain sight, I've been using it because of just my, um, it's just my my company and and I I would use it, use it regardless, but, but other platforms that I've feel like have been very useful to me um, has been Twitter. Um, the Twitter conversations uh, have been fantastic that I've been a part of. Um, LinkedIn has re- been really good for finding out about news that's been coming out. So uh, every time, um, you know, every in the beginning, you know, every time there was a new webinar or a new virtual conference or something like that, I would always find that information out on LinkedIn pretty much. But now what's really interesting is because of all of that's happening in our country with everybody shining a light on race relations, which I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to be uh, to be living in, in a time that feels very different from from other moments in, in history that I've read about and seen footage on is that this seems like 
um, more of a priority than it has been in the time to really try to get things fixed. And because of that, you've got corporations and funders and all of these types of things stepping up and they're making these statements and they're coming out with funds and, um, you know, they're, they're trying to, they're giving up their board seats. You know, the CEO of Reddit gave up his, his board seat for, uh, for, some, for a person of color to, to take that position, right? And so I, I've been seeing a lot of that now and it's been very encouraging to, to see those things. And I think that that's some of the stuff that I'm seeing more on on my LinkedIn feed um, more than anything here here recently and 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 some on on Twitter too um, but but my LinkedIn feed has been very busy with with that type of information it seems um, another app that um, I've been using here lately is Clubhouse I don't know if any of you guys have heard of Clubhouse or not but it's invitation only um, and basically once you get into Clubhouse it's like everybody is on one big Zoom call whenever you start a quote unquote room, um, but it's all audio and no video, right? And so people, anybody who has the Clubhouse app can start their own room. People get in and they start having really uh, meaningful conversations about whatever they would like to talk about. So I'll give you an example. Uh, one, one Clubhouse conversation that I really enjoyed that, that took place not too long ago uh, was about should the NBA um, continue its season, right? Would it be a distraction um, from everything that's going on with race relations in our in our uh, country right now, and us trying to make things um, equal um, and justice for uh, for for people of color, especially, right? L like, should the NBA play, uh, or would that be a distraction from that mission and, and that message? And it was just a great conversation um, because you have these these very influential people. Um, who you know are, are driving a lot of the decisions that that happen with the way that we um, that we operate in the world and the new technology that comes out and and e sports and entertainment and all of that kind of stuff. Um, having conversations around those things it has been really really helpful um, for me because uh, one of the things that that goes into building collaborations from from a distance, uh, at, at least in my personal experience, has been the fact that I get down a lot with us being uh, isolated in our homes and we can't really leave out and everybody's wearing masks and people are getting sick and things of that nature. I, I sometimes am just not in the mood um, to, to talk to people and not in the mood to try to actively start conversations and things of that nature. And so it's kind of cool that with Clubhouse, you can just listen in on the conversation that's happening and you don't necessarily have to join. And sometimes you can, you know, jump in and, and have conversations and things of that nature. And it just boosts your spirits um, because it, it, it starts to provide a little bit more of a, a human element approach to um, to the way that we're going about doing business right now, right? Um, and so the uh, one more thing I'll, I'll share, and I'll shut up, and I'll, I'll kind of just uh, let you guys know, like about my uh, my past and how I even got got to Detroit, and then we can open up for for some questions and things of that nature. Um, is what what's next with with Plain Sight is our app for building community in and around shared spaces is now going to be helping to provide ways to re-enter those same spaces, right? And so um, peace of mind and confidence to go inside of shared spaces is going to be major key for us getting back out and working from those coffee shops and those co-working spaces or even going to do business with retail and restaurants um, that are nearby us, right? And so with Plain Sight, you'll be able to find out what places nearest you are open for business. You can gain the confidence to enter those spaces by reviewing their reentry guidelines, um, have the ability to reserve a spot by booking, and then of course always share inspiration and seek advice and socialize with the people um, that are in and around those spaces with you. So we're, we're excited about this, this new challenge that we're going to be embarking upon because at the end of the day, um, we know that working from home is fine and we all want to do that uh, at some point in, anyway and at times anyway. But, but getting that energy and being collaborative is best done when you're at least near other people, right? And being able to, um, to bounce things off of other folks and write things on a whiteboard and all of that kind of stuff. So 
Um, you know, we're not quite there yet with, with being able to, um, to be business as, as usual with, with our collaborations, but we've got to all get creative on what we can do to be able to get at least a taste of that. So, um, so that we, um, so that our growth isn't stunted, right. By, by what's happening with, um, with everything in, in the world with, um, and, and health is always a priority, right? We have to be safe and we have to be healthy first before we can do anything else. So, um, we're excited about that. I, I moved to Detroit four years ago, uh, and I was recruited here by Dan Gilbert and his team to help with entrepreneurship initiatives in the city. Um, the, the biggest project that I uh, started and launched from uh, with that organization is Detroit Demo Day. Um, and so anybody who's, uh, who's watching right now that's been to Demo Day uh, and that's familiar with me probably knows me from Demo Day, but uh, even more so than they know me from doing my work with Plain Sight, right? Uh, and so um, we love Demo Day. Yep, I love Demo Day too. Uh, and so, you know, Demo Day is providing $1.2 million in, in annual funding uh, in the past has provided $1.2 million in annual funding for Detroit-based startups um, to be able to start growing scale their, their initiatives. Uh, and, you know, the, the thing about it, while, while I very much love Demo Day, um, the reason why I transitioned out of that work uh, is because that when I was in Chattanooga before I moved up to Detroit, I started a co-working space for side hustlers. Um, and the co-working space is open between the hours of 6 p.m. and midnight for people to be able to just have a space to come and share ideas and collaborate with one another um, and be able to um, to get out of the home where, you know, you've got all of these different distractions. And, and also, um, even outside of that, oftentimes coffee shops and co-working spaces are closed at six o'clock. So, um, you know, that, that space was very, um, the space for the side hustlers um, what was very useful and important. And it was one of the things that, that actually um, um, struck the interest in the, um, the Rock Ventures and, and Rock FOC team for me coming up. And so I couldn't help but think about the, the question that would always come up whenever I would run and operate the space, which is, you know, who's in the space right now and who's going to be in the space, which, which allowed me to realize that that collaboration is the, was the primary reason why people were coming to the space just that, um, and, and, and them having the actual space to do it was, was secondary, actually. Um, and so that's what led me to the idea for, uh, for Plain Sight pitched that idea to uh, a number of angel investors. Uh, they got really interested. Uh, and then I ended up resigning from uh, running the, the work at Demo Day to, to going full time on Plain Sight. And we've raised um, um, nearly a million dollars in, in funding thus far um, to continue to, to, make our, uh, to make our venture grow and scale. So, um, you know, I, I, I've talked for 20 minutes straight now and I would love to know um, who else is, is in the audience, what you guys are experiencing, uh, how you guys have been able to make connections uh, while you've been, been at home, and also just any questions that, that you guys may have for me on, on anything that I've talked about thus far. So I don't know if you got to see the two questions in the chat. They're both from uh, Rebecca. The first one is, uh, what information is included in the profile on the Plain Sight app? Yeah. Um, so um, when you create your Plainsight app profile, you're, we're going to ask you what you're looking for, your skills, uh, your interests, um, your, a short bio, and you can also include um, links to your social channels. So LinkedIn, your website. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, let me make sure I'm good there. Uh, LinkedIn, your website. And then also um, Twitter and Instagram. So those are the things that we ask you for whenever you're um, whenever you're creating your profile. And the second question is: Does Plain Sight check in work for virtual events? What does that the, mean? Yeah, uh, I, I think I know what that means. Uh, I think that when it comes to Mm, call it virtual events. Plain sight can be useful for people to check in and they can have conversations um, almost kind of like Twitter thread style w within that virtual space, so to speak. Um, but I, I think 
oftentimes my experience has been with, with virtual events, you want some type of video aspect and component, um, or maybe not, but, but the, all the ones that I've been joining have, have had at least some type of video element to it, like live video. And we're not there yet with, with plain sight. So um, it really just depends on, on what you're looking for, for the experience with your, um, with your event. Um, another question from Christina is how did you initially get connected to your investors? That's one. And are there any tips you can provide for those looking for startup funds? Yeah, so um, how I got connected to my investors, actually that's a really good question because if I think about everybody that's investing in plain sight, it's all been relationship based. And what you'll find is when you're when you're so early in your venture and you really don't have a whole lot to show, like no real metrics, no revenue, you know, not 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 a lot of um, users or any users in, um, for for that matter. Um, it can be really challenging. So the first thing that I did was put up about thirty to forty thousand dollars out of my own pocket and and um, some from my team for us to be able to get a web application built. Once we got the web application built, we were then able to go and test it out with a number of different co-working spaces. We would like tell the co-working space that we'll feed their, their members lunch if they'd be willing to test out the platform for us. And so that, that worked and, and they decided to do so. Uh, and so after that, that gave us the information that we could then use to go to, uh, to present to angel investors. And, and, you know, I, I'll never forget, there's another uh, application that you guys may want to check out. It's called Shaper. Um, one of my investors I met on Shaper when I was out in, um, in San Francisco for Afrotech. So uh, Shaper is basically like, I don't know if you guys have heard of Bumblebiz, uh, which is co an, another platform for, for making connections virtually. But if you're on like Bumble or Bumblebiz, or whatever, you got like this swiping motion, Shaper is the same thing. It's just like professional profiles and you're swiping and then you get uh, matched. And so um, Irving Vela, who is uh, one of my investors, he's an investment banker in, in Silicon Valley, actually. We, um, we sw both swiped each other on Shaper. We decided to meet at a coffee shop. Um, I told him what I was working on and, and he liked it and, and he decided to invest. And then the others have just come from relationships that I've built over the, over the time uh, where there's like somebody saying, hey, I believe in you. You know, I saw what you built with Demo Day. Um, I think that you can execute on things. I like your idea. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to write you a $10,000 check. So um, I, I would say, you know, the, and that's why continuing to build relationships is so important, even when we have to be isolated. And I know that that's super hard, uh, but we gotta, we gotta continue to build on those relationships because we're gonna need them when it gets time for us to, um, to grow whatever it is that we wanna grow. We have to have the human capital support first. Uh, and what was, the, what was the, I know that was a two part question. What was the second half of that question? Cause I forget it. Well, um... Are there any tight any tips you provide for looking for the startup funds? But you gave that. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say, you know, start as small as you possibly can. Like with Plain Sight, we were we were first a survey, right? We were using a type form survey going around, like asking people questions and we tried to design it to make it look like an application. Um, and then, you know, we, of course we had to get scrappy and just put some of our own money up to get a web app. Um, and, and then that's what gave us enough information for us to be able to take to an investor uh, for, uh, for, for them to take a look at and use. And that's angel investor networks that are, that are out there. Some of those are, are pretty good. Um, I definitely recommend joining like accelerators, like there's like Backstage Capital and, and other, and a lot of the accelerators actually are going virtual. So like, even if you are in a city where typically an accelerator is happening, they're allowing other people to join that accelerator because everything's virtual now anyway. So um, I, I would say explore those options too. Um, another question is, um, was the app creation process a long one? And can you talk a bit more about development of your app? Yeah, it was a long one. <laughs> um, so it took about, whenever we decided to go mobile, it took about three months for us to get the very early MVP 
out the door and we used Shrine Development in Ferndale. Shout out to Shrine. Uh, do not mind plugging them because they're, they're a great firm. Um, so, so Shrine built our initial version of, of Plain Sight. Um, it took them about three, three and a half months. We actually premiered that at Startup Week last year. Um, we're just allowing people to create a profile and like check in, right? That was the only thing that, that you can do. And that allowed us to get enough um, feedback to like say like, this is a feature we need to add and these are the things that we need to tweak and here are the things we need to like break and think about. And then we did our, um, and then of course you have to test the bugs on all of those things because there's always going to be bugs. And then we did our official um, launch and release uh, and announcement in October. Um, and, and so it could, you know, depending upon what you consider long, um, it is right. In my opinion, uh, it could, it could take about a year for somebody to really go from idea, um, to actual web app built and in the app store. Um, and I'm sorry, that one was a two part question as well. What was, what was the second half of that question? No, that was it. Okay. That was the, it was just, uh, was the, was the process long and, then speaking about the development of the app. Yo, yo. So another, there's a couple more questions. Uh, Nikki's question is, um, I have a diversity training and consulting company and the majority of my new clients want virtual training. Many in-person trainings are three hours. Do you think a 90 minute training is sufficient, especially since everyone seems to be on Zoom overload and attention spans are short right now? Yeah, I think now you got to make the shorter the better, uh, Nikki. Uh, I know that I'm burnt out on Zoom calls uh, because, you know, we're doing them all day, right? If you if you have a team based on whatever your um, whatever your job is, if, if you've got a team, you're probably meeting with your team by Zoom or Google Hangouts or, or Slack video or some other type of platform uh, that, that's out there. And that can get pretty exhausting just yelling at this computer screen for hours upon hours anyway, and then you got to go and, and sit in on another one. So I, I think the shorter you can make it, the better, and maybe even chop it up and turn it into a series so that it's not all in bulk in, in one time because people's attention spans are already thin. And then you throw in the fact that we've got to be on these devices for so long, uh, it, could, it could be very daunting. Uh, and I, I know even personally, I've, I've gotten burned out from it myself at, at times. So uh, my, my advice would definitely be the, sh uh, the shorter version of it. Um, and another question uh, is from when, and is, the, is your app being used in Canada? I'm in Windsor, just across the river from Detroit. Yeah, so we we are in Canada now, so it, uh, all Canadians can download the app and, and have access. We don't have any spaces listed in Canada, but you can still jump in and have conversations with the users that are near you. And we've got a ton of users in, in Detroit. So um, yeah, uh, who, whoever's in, in Windsor, Canada, yeah, download that thing and, and jump in there and, and um, have some meaningful conversations. And I'm wondering, are there any last questions that folks have before we get ready to go? Going once, going twice, okay. Well, oh, uh-oh, someone put in a big long question. Is this a question? Uh, no, it's just an invite, I think. So that's cool. So everyone check the chat for that, um, that invite. That's pretty cool. So this has been really great. I don't know if you want to leave some words for signing off with us, James. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, just stay diligent, guys. Regardless of what tool that you use to be able to make connections with people, there's a million of them out there. Plain sight is just one. Um, I'm biased towards that one, so for, for sure get it. But outside of that, just stay hungry. Just always continue to look at how you can sharpen your sword and be um, – uh, be diligent in, in that pursuit. And I know that there's a lot going on in the world right now. Um, and there's so many distractions that, that are happening. Um, but, but I would say just stay steadfast in that approach of, of trying to um, increase your, your human capital um, and also stay safe. 
um, as much as much as you can. And, and thank you guys for uh, for joining and, and chopping it up with me for a little bit. My email address is I'll drop it in the chat right here. So if you guys ever want to connect, feel free to um, to do so. And I'm happy to to answer any other questions. Um, you know, by by email or hopping on the phone with anybody um, and and giving you guys any advice that I that I may have. So thank you guys for for chopping it up with me and, and hope you guys have a good rest of your day.